EPCO Educational Topic Number 10, Antepartum Care. Antepartum care refers to care before labor and delivery and begins with the first prenatal visit. Women who receive antepartum care during the first trimester have better pregnancy outcomes. Meet our patient, Newly Preggers. In this video, we will follow Newly's journey through antepartum care. The objectives of this video are to diagnose pregnancy, to assess risk factors for pregnancy complications, including screening for intimate partner violence, to describe appropriate diagnostic studies and their timing for a normal pregnancy, to list the nutritional needs of pregnant women, and to identify adverse effects of drugs and the environment on pregnancy, to perform a physical examination on an obstetric patient, to discuss answers to commonly asked questions concerning pregnancy, labor, and delivery, to describe approaches to assessing the following, fetal well-being, fetal growth, amniotic fluid volume, fetal lung maturity, and to describe the impact of pregnancy on medical problems and the impact of medical problems on pregnancy. Newly has regular 28-day cycles and she has just missed a period. Most women will take a home pregnancy test. How sensitive is a home pregnancy test? It becomes positive with a beta HCG as low as 25. Newly may notice symptoms such as fatigue, nausea, vomiting, and breast tenderness early in pregnancy. For low-risk women, the first prenatal visit will be an intake visit at 6 to 8 weeks, followed by her first prenatal visit before 12 weeks. What are the goals of prenatal care? Early and continuing risk assessment. Health promotion medical and psychosocial intervention and follow-up. At the time of Newley's first prenatal visit, a comprehensive history will be performed. Special attention will be paid to chronic medical issues, past pregnancies and their outcomes, gynecologic issues, genetic screening issues, and social history. Smoking during pregnancy has well-known risks including miscarriage, placental abruption, fetal growth restriction, preterm delivery, birth defects, and sudden infant death syndrome. Alcohol is a known teratogen. Alcohol consumption during pregnancy is a leading preventable cause of mental retardation, developmental delay, and birth defects in the fetus. Other important issues to discuss are drugs, environmental and health hazards, domestic violence which occurs with high prevalence during pregnancy, and seatbelt use. One of the most important aspects of the first prenatal visit is establishment of the estimated date of delivery. Remember that we use gestational age that starts on the first day of her last menstrual period. The estimated date of delivery, or EDD, is calculated as 40 weeks past the LMP if she has regular 28-day cycles. Vaginal ultrasound can be used to determine the EDD if the patient cycles are irregular or to confirm the EDD if the patient cycles are regular. Since Newly is a normal, low-risk pregnancy, she will be seen at 4-week intervals until 28 weeks, then every 2 weeks until 36 weeks, then every week until delivery. During each of these visits, she will have a weight, blood pressure, and fetal assessment. For diabetes screening, there will be a 1-hour glucose tolerance test between 24 and 28 weeks to screen for gestational diabetes. For obese women, the diabetes screening should occur at the initial prenatal visit. How do we monitor the fetus during Newly's pregnancy? Fetal heart rate can be verified with a Doppler device starting in about 12 weeks. Chromosomal screening provides the probability of chromosomal abnormalities. The first trimester screen provides the probability of trisomy 21 and trisomy 18. It is performed between 10 and 13 weeks. It is an ultrasound assessment of the nuchal translucency and a maternal serum test of PAP-A and free beta HCG. Alternatively, maternal serum screening also provides probabilities of chromosomal abnormalities. This is performed between 15 and 20 weeks. The triple test consists of alpha fetal protein, estriol, and HCG, and the quad test consists of alpha fetal protein, estriol, HCG, and inhibin. The fetal survey ultrasound is performed between approximately 18 to 20 weeks. If we are especially concerned about the fetus for conditions such as maternal diabetes, hypertension, or fetal growth restriction, then we will monitor the fetus more closely with non-stress tests. The non-stress test measures fetal heart rate, patterns, and accelerations by an external transducer for at least 20 minutes. It is considered reactive if there are at least two accelerations over the 20-minute period. Maternal kick counts are a way for Newly to reassure herself of fetal well-being. Starting at around 32 weeks, if she is concerned about decreased fetal movement, then she should lay on her side and she should feel 5 movements in 1 hour or 10 movements in 2 hours. Let's now move to fetal growth. The most commonly used assessment of growth is fundal height measurement. This measures the distance from the pubic symphysis to the top of the fundus. The fundal height measurement is approximately the number of weeks gestation. 
Amniotic fluid volume is assessed with an amniotic fluid index. This is a four-quadrant assessment of amniotic fluid pockets. Decreased amniotic fluid is secondary to the fetus shunting blood away from the kidneys to the brain, which leads to decreased urine output. Let's now talk about fetal lung maturity. The respiratory system is the last fetal system to mature functionally, and if newly has to be delivered preterm, then it can be sometimes helpful to assess fetal lung maturity. This is done by sampling her amniotic fluid through an amniocentesis procedure and checking for markers of lung maturity. What are Newly's unique nutritional needs during pregnancy? For folic acid, she should take at least 0.4 milligrams of folic acid daily starting around the time of conception, and this significantly reduces the risk of neural tube defects. If she's had a pregnancy affected by a neural tube defect, then she should take 4 grams of folic acid daily. Excessive weight gain during pregnancy leads to an increased risk of pregnancy complications such as fetal macrosomia. It significantly also increases the risk of postpartum obesity. Weight gain recommendations are based on pre-pregnancy BMI. For a pre-pregnancy BMI of less than 19.8, the weight gain recommendation is 28 to 40 pounds. For 19.8 to 26, recommended is 25 to 35 pounds. For 26 to 29, it is 15 to 25 pounds. And if the pre-pregnancy BMI is greater than 29 pounds, the recommended weight gain is 11 to 20 pounds. Alternatively, inadequate weight gain in pregnancy is associated with preterm delivery, intrauterine growth restriction, and low birth weight. There are also foods with specific risks during pregnancy. Unpasteurized milk and dairy products and cold lunch meats could potentially carry listeriosis, which causes an increased risk of intrauterine fetal demise. Fish is a great source of omega-3 oils. However, large fish such as tuna, shark, and king mackerel have a higher mercury content because they eat the smaller fish and should be avoided during pregnancy. Herbal remedies are not regulated and therefore pregnant women should be counseled to consider avoiding them. Moving on to frequently asked questions. Can newly exercise during pregnancy? Yes, she should avoid exercises that carry risks of falling or abdominal trauma, and she probably shouldn't start any new strenuous exercises during pregnancy that she did not partake in pre-pregnancy. Can newly have sex? Yes, unless she has conditions such as placenta previa or premature rupture of membranes. She and her partner will likely need to work together to find positions that are more comfortable during pregnancy. Can newly travel? Yes. Most airlines allow travel up to 36 weeks. Have her avoid long periods of prolonged sitting and have her walk every one to two hours to promote circulation. Remind Newly of the importance of seat belts worn low on her hip bones. Should Newly expose herself to teratogens during pregnancy? No, there are very few medications that are proven human teratogens. Common ones to avoid are ACE inhibitors, Coumadin, and isotretinoin. For ionizing radiation, it is recommended to limit exposure of the fetus to less than 5 rads. A CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis has approximately 3.5 rads. A CT scan of the head is approximately less than 1 rad. An abdominal x-ray is 100 to 200 millirads, and a chest x-ray is 0.02 to 0.07 millirads. We have covered quite a bit during Newly's journey through antepartum care. We have discussed pregnancy-specific needs and considerations and ways of assessing fetal well-being and addressed frequently asked questions.